Hey. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Abhisant Puri. I'm an associate product manager at Salesforce. I'm joined by Chris Harrison, director of product management. Today, I'd like to share with you about the uh, Bulk API 2.0 the optimal API to asynchronously upload, query, and delete large data sets in your Salesforce org. I'm sure that you've seen this bulk level of text in various sessions already, so I'm going to quickly skim through it. Before we dive in, I just have to remind you that because forward-looking statements are an inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, you should make any purchasing decisions or investment decisions based on products that are currently commercially available. Awesome, so now we can get into the great, the good stuff. So Chris and I are part of the Enterprise API team, which has built several core data APIs, including the SOAP, REST, Bulk, Composite, and Custom APIs. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, SOAP and REST perform similar functions with synchronous CRUD operations. And SOAP has a more complex protocol, but is good for server-to-server -server integrations because data types are defined in the WSDL. REST, on the other hand, generally has an easier protocol to use and, and, and employs HTTP verbs to access resources. We're gonna explore the bulk and composite uh, APIs in much greater detail later on. So I'm gonna skip over those for now. The custom APIs actually doesn't refer to one API, but rather us enabling developers to expose their own Apex methods as SOAP and REST web services so that external applications can access their code and their applications. During the Q&A time, you can ask Chris and me about any of these APIs within our family. Overall, our enterprise API team has two main guiding principles that guide our investment in our product space. First is to allow our customers to work more efficiently and get more done in a single API call. Second is to remove impediments in our customer's workflow to reduce friction and help them achieve more. During this presentation, we're gonna be primarily focused on the bulk APIs. As I mentioned, the bulk APIs provide an asynchronous workflow to upload, query, and delete large data sets. They employ REST principles and we generally recommend using the bulk APIs for jobs with over 2000 records. So in comparison with the original bulk API, the bulk API 2.0 has the advantage of an easier workflow. This is primarily because you do not have to create and manage batches manually as in the past with the original bulk API and can simply upload data to your jobs and let Salesforce handle the asynchronous processing. Our corresponding limits are also similar and more generous. For example, when you're working with ingest, instead of having to deal with 10,000 records for each individual batch, you simply have to work with the 150 MB file size limit for each ingest job. Bulk API 2.0 also has the benefit of future investment and innovation from Salesforce. We're highlighting two of our recent enhancements today, the auto handling of locks for Bulk API 2.0 as well as the composite graph payload in the bulk API 2.0. So let me show you a little bit about what this workflow looks like. We're going to look at the orders uh, records that we want to ingest into the Salesforce org, and we're going to use Postman as a client to do so. Postman is great because there is a extensive collection of not just our APIs, but other APIs across the Salesforce platform. So first, what's great about Bulk API 2.0 is it allows us to use the OAuth 2.0 browser-based authentication flow. And as you can see, there's a simple callback to the uh, Postman app, and it automatically gets us our authentication, um, our, our uh, access token, as well as the instance URL that we need for the rest of the API calls that we make. Um, keep in mind that uh, the Bulk API 2.0 also supports the SOAP-based protocol, but Bulk API, the original Bulk API only supports a SOAP-based protocol. So next, we set our endpoints using the instance URL that we got in that callback, and then we gather our data. So in this case, I have 15K orders data. And next, we're going to create our job. So we inherit our authentication via Postman from 
the uh, that we created earlier. We specify our object, in this case, orders. Next, we put our operation, which is insert, and our line ending for our CSV file, which is CRLF. Now, in the response, we get a lot of valuable information, most importantly, the job ID for the job that we just created. So next we go to upload our job data. So we're just gonna grab the CSV file that we created earlier of orders, which contains 15K records, and we send it off to Salesforce. After that, we close the job, and this basically lets Salesforce know that we're done uploading the data and they can begin processing. Um, at any point, we can get information about the job, so it'll tell us if it's currently processing or if it's completed or if the job has failed. And after the job is done processing, we can view successful records using a simple get method. We can also view unsuccessful or failed records as well via separate API get call. So as you can see, our entire workflow for, in, for ingesting 15K orders records simply took five calls in bulk API 2.0. And the main beauty of that is we left all of the batch management to Salesforce. Instead of having to create a separate batch for 10,000 records, we simply had to work with one job. Now we only had 15K records. And so with 15K records, uh, you'd have to create two separate batches and this would result in an additional call in this case. But imagine if we had something like 100,000 records or much more, you can see how the number of records you, call, you have would cause the number of calls to the bulk APIs to linearly scale in the case of the original bulk API. With Bulk API 2.0, you can drastically cut down the number of calls, especially when you're using when you're when you're making these calls on a regular basis uh, through your applications. So now I'd like to uh, focus on two of our closed pilot features um, that we would love to get you involved with and get more feedback from, so that we can push this out to GA. So this is the composite payload in Bulk API 2.0 and the auto handling of locking. So I know locks are the bane of some developers' existence, and we've all, you know, uh, through either in our coursework or in our actual work, have had experience of, you know, doing everything right, but still, you know, somehow ending up with uh, locking errors. And like any other relational database, Salesforce uses locks to ensure that we have referential integrity on our platform. It's important to note that these locks are held for very short periods of time. And if you're a normal user on the Salesforce platform, you probably aren't really going to run into issues with them. However, when we're working with bulk volumes of data in the tens of thousands to millions of records, there's a greater chance of running into these locking errors. So handling locking errors in the original bulk API was a little bit more difficult because you had to manually check the error in the job and then rerun the job in serial mode. A popular suggestion that we got in the idea exchange was to help handle this. And so because of this suggestion in the idea exchange, we took it into our backlog. And what we did is in, we created this pilot feature to automatically check in the bulk API 2.0 if there's a locking error that occurs during your original job. If there is, we automatically handle it to ensure a greater chance that the job is successful. I'm going to share a simple example where locking may occur. And then we can jump into exploring the actual uh, impact of this pilot feature. So a simple case where locking may occur is when you're trying to, again, ingest orders. Orders actually is a child of both the account and contract objects. And so when you place, when you're trying to perform CRUD operations on um, order records, the corresponding parent account and contract record will also have a lock placed on it for a small amount of time. And so you can imagine that if two different applications are uh, doing simultaneous ingest orders, which have the same uh, account parent or the same contract parent, this can result in locking issues. So again, the applications can be dealing with different orders data but if they share the account or the contract parent, this can result in locking issues. So let's see how that looks like. Um, again, in Postman, if we don't have the auto handling of locking enabled in bulk API 2.0. So first, we're going to create our jobs. So we're going to make special note of this first job ID. We're going to copy it because we'll need to use it later. 
And then we're going to create our second job as well. Next, we're going to upload our data for the job. So we'll first upload our orders data for job one, and then we're going to upload our orders data for job two. Next, we're going to tell Salesforce we're done uploading data. You can begin processing. And it's really important that we do this within seconds of each other. So you can see I did them very, very um, quickly within each other because we're trying to simulate that simultaneous uh, ingest request going in. And now that we're done doing this, Salesforce is going to begin processing these two jobs. And when we check our job status, we'll see something's wrong because nearly 15K records have been processed and all of them have unfortunately failed for job one. And when we check job two, it's the same situation, 15K processed and 15K records failed. So when we check what's going on it, using our get uh, uh, failed uh, records uh, uh, call, what we'll see is that we have an unable to lock row error. So let's redo that with the pilot actually enabled now. So again, we're going to create job one, making special note of the job ID that we get here. And we're going to copy that for use later on. We're going to create job two with making, uh, again, note of the job ID that we get. Then we're going to upload the data, the orders data for job one. We're going to upload the orders data for job two. We're going to tell Salesforce, hey, we finished uploading the data so you can begin processing. And uh, again, we're going to do that very, very quickly between the two requests in order to sort of simulate these simultaneous requests going in. Um, so you can do that. See, I did that within a few seconds of each other. And when we get information about job one, we see that it's in progress. When we get information about job two, we'll again see it's in progress. Um, and at some point in the future, the jobs are now completed. And we see that the number of records processed is 14,999 and zero have failed for job one and job two. And uh, when we actually go to see if any records, if there's any failed records um, for job one, we see that there are none. And again, for job two, which you know job ID is represented by underscore job ID, we see that there are none. So in this case, the, uh, the, the feature that we built uh, actually handled the locking, saw that there was a locking error and handled it and reran the job uh, for us to make sure that we don't have to deal with this at all. So that's a great example of you know, how the Bulk API 2.0 and this specific feature can sort of reduce your day-to-day -day hassle and make sure that more jobs are successful and let you really focus on more you know, business-specific logic. Uh, next, I wanna talk about you know, relationships within the Salesforce platform and what it means for us within Bulk API 2.0. You know, as with life, relationships are probably you know, one of, if not the most important parts of the Salesforce platform. Many objects are related to each other. And you, know, you can kind of only derive value from a lot of our features by make, taking advantage of the relationships. So a very, very simple and you know, popular example is that a contact is a child of the parent account object. Now, when you are working with REST-based or um, bulk uh, uh, APIs, this can be a little bit difficult to reconcile because the bulk and REST APIs only allow you to work on one S object at a time. So you can only work on ingesting or querying or reading the accounts or the context at any given time. And so when you are working with existing relationships outside of the Salesforce uh, database, uh, and, and you want to like bring this data in, it can sometimes create a little bit of struggle uh, when, you, when you have to make a many, many you know, REST calls versus one simple call to sort of like maintain this relationship. Fortunately, this is why we developed the composite and composite graph APIs. And again, the, the key advantages here are that they allow you to run, um, allow you to manipulate different entities in the same transaction. So as we'll see later on, this is especially useful when you want to sequentially work on related entities, especially ones with parent-child relationships. Um, and you know, I sort of gave the example earlier of a contact account and then a contact uh, under that account. The Composite Graph uh, API, so sorry, the Composite API allows you to do this by executing a series of REST API calls in a single call 
and using the output of one request as the input to a subsequent request. So we can actually visualize the sub requests as a graph with the nodes being the S objects and the relationships between the nodes being one directional arrows. So this is kind of why we built the Composite Graph API to bring this representation to life and also to add additional functionality that we can make use of with this graph representation. Um, you know, one of the great features that you have with this graph representation is you can check if the rest operations at any given level of the graph have been completed. This is crucial in situations where a mix of, of successful and unsuccessful operations is either burdensome or downright unacceptable. And keep in mind that it also allows you to work with up to 500 sub requests in any given call, which is 20 times greater than the composite API limit of 25. Finally, we're, we have the ability through the composite graph API to construct multiple graphs within a single request. And this is re really where the bulk API 2.0 comes into play. So let's look at a simple use case for the composite API. Let's say that we want to create an account, and then we want to create a second account as a child of account one. So, so far, really simple. Then we want to create a series of contacts, and we want the contacts to have parent-child relationships with each other and with account two. So, so far, we kind of have the right side of this graph. Then let's say we want to create a campaign, and we want to create an opportunity linked to that campaign as well as to account two. And then finally, we want to create a campaign member linked to the lead, uh, linked to the lead we created earlier, as well as the campaign. So as you can see, um, if we were to try to do this with a series of REST calls, we'd have to create a REST call for the accounts, for the contacts, for the opportunity, for the campaign, for the campaign member, as well as the lead. Um, and so you're looking at a minimum of six REST calls to create this uh, relatively simple graph. And so what we're able to do with the composite graph API is take this simple payload and submit it as a single graph to get this done in a single call to the composite graph API. And what's great is that the functionality we've built is to also create multiple graphs. So if there's an unrelated account three, and an unrelated contact four and five, which again have parent-child relationships, we can create that in the composite graph payload. And now we can sequentially process both of these graphs. And where bulk API 2.0 comes in is that in creating you know, multiple graphs, we can use, we can submit this same payload, the composite graph payload, into the bulk API 2.0 and run these asynchronously. So let me show you a quick demo of what that looks like. Okay, great. So we are now in Postman. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by creating our job as always. So in this case, our operation is composite and our content type is JSON. So let's send our request. As you can see, the it returns the job ID, the operation is composite, the state is open, the concurrency mode is parallel. So it's going to it's going to start by running our job in parallel, and the content type that we're providing is JSON. So so far, everything in the response looks great. Next, we're going to upload our composite async uh, data uh, payload. So let, let's uh, send that over. One thing to note is that you'll, when you're working with this, you'll want to update the content type. So usually we only allow CSV content type with uh, ingest for bulk API 2.0 so to make sure we want to update that. And then we are going to close the job, basically tell Salesforce we're done uploading. You can go ahead and work on this now. So while we are doing, while you know the, the, that is processing, I want to show you the payload. Great, so you can see the composite, let me make sure you can see this, yep. So you can see the, the payload here. So again, this is the same payload that you would normally submit to the composite graph API, which you can now submit to the bulk API in order to run these graphs asynchronously. So as you can see, there's a, the, the graph representation here 
Um, and for each sub request, you basically have the URL, a body, the method that you are performing on that specific object, as well as a reference ID. And what's uh, useful here is that once you create a reference ID for like a parent object, you can use it later on. So, you know, again, simple example here is that you have a reference ID for the contact that you've created. And now we can use that reference ID in the child for account two to sort of create that relationship. And again, um, we obviously represent multiple graphs here. So here is our second graph with account three and contacts four and contacts five. So let us pop back into Postman. Let me reshare that screen. So we're back in Postman. We can see that the job has completed. Right here, job complete. We can see it was done in parallel. And great, so 12 records were processed and zero failed. So now we can look at our successful results and see you know, both graphs processed successfully. The reference IDs are here and you can get the IDs um, for these ob objects, uh, for, for these records, excuse me, um, in Salesforce itself as well. So that's a really simple use case. Now, I can assure you that when you are working with the composite, let me go back to the presentation. So I can assure you that when you are working with the composite payload within the bulk API 2.0, you're going to be working with a large number of graphs and way more nodes. So we were only working with about 10 nodes across two graphs. Um, in a normal, so let's say you're working with a normal composite graph API. There are several limits, such as the maximum number of graphs in one payload being 75, the maximum depth of a graph being 15, the maximum number of nodes used in one graph being 500, and the maximum number of different nodes in one payload being 15. However, you also have the limit for a maximum number of nodes supported in one payload being 500. So you can basically only work on up to 500 nodes or 500 different sort of records um, at any given time. So you can sort of uh, see, um, this is really useful for smaller synchronous jobs. And the use case here isn't really a bulk level of jobs. So if you need something perhaps done more quickly, this is a great synchronous option for smaller payloads. But if you want to like really, you know, take advantage of all of these limits and you have, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of nodes that you want to work with, the bulk API 2.0 really allows you to use this composite payload at a bulk scale. So instead of only being able to work with, again, 500 maximum nodes, what we do here is we just offer you the same uh, payload size limit as all in just jobs on bulk API 2.0. So it's 150 megabytes. And the maximum number of nodes you can work with for every 24 hours is 100,000. Oh, sorry, 100 million. And so you can see that, you know, this really expands the amount of graphs that you can work with, as well as the number of nodes that you can put in each graph. So the, this is a you know, fantastic option uh, for, for various use cases when you want to maintain that relationship and you have to do a large migration or a large amount of, you have to get a large amount of data out of Salesforce. So finally, we want to kind of discuss what our roadmap is for upcoming releases and what you can expect from our team for the bulk API 2.0. So first, uh, along the theme of doing more with less calls, we're really focused on providing support for big objects. And what this means uh, is that, you know, you can now, in, instead of having to rely, it, it served as a barrier um, because some, some uh, some customers uh, only were able to use bulk API 1.0 um, because they needed this functionality. So we're, we're committed to removing those sorts of barriers uh, for adoption. We're also enabling PK chunking for thousands of more objects to make your queries more efficient. We're increasing the file capacity um, for ingest, and we're also isolating ingest limits so that you can run bigger ingest jobs and you run into limits less often. Long-term, the GA, the pilot that I just showcased to you today, we're looking to drive that across the finish line with our customers' feedback and you know, make, that GA, uh, make that GA an available for everyone. 
And we're also looking to add support for additional content types using, including XML and JSON. Again, like we want to remove this as a barrier of adoption for Bulk API 2.0 and ensure that uh, you know, like customers aren't uh, you know forced to use the original Bulk API if they need this uh, specific functionality to for their applications. Next, we're also committed to reducing friction. So short term, we're focused around this uh, with an expansion and simplification of our limit handling. Again, to ensure that more uh, jobs are successful, we're actually improving our internal processing of PK chunking to make it more efficient. Long term, we are also working on auto handling of record locks. And uh, we are also uh, representing bulk API 2.0 with open API specification. And lastly, we're looking to revamp the bulk page within setup to make it more usable and more functional uh, in managing your bulk jobs. So finally, I'd also like to leave you with how you can engage with our team and with the bulk APIs. So first I'd like you to consider, and, and you know, hopefully you're inspired by this pre presentation, to consider if the bulk API 2.0 is useful for your current integration or if you're new to the Salesforce ecosystem, if it would make sense for your new integrations. Next, uh, you can, if you're using the Bulk API 2.0, you can join our Trailblazer community group where you can post questions, get advice, and see general you know, tips and tricks to better integrate with the Bulk API 2.0. Next, uh, you know, consider joining the pilots that we've demonstrated today. Again, these rows out of an idea exchange post and um, we're you know, gathering feedback currently from customers. So we'd love to get more people onboarded if, if these pilots features would be useful for them and get their feedback so that we can push this across the finish line and get it GA and available to all our customers. So to do this, you can either reach out to the account team or my contact information is listed here. Um, I can also drop my contact information in the chat and it's you know, on a later slide as well. Finally, our product marketing team developed a great uh, trail mix uh, for Dreamforce that was uh, held in September. So this trail mix is a, not only includes the core data APIs that are part of our team, but other APIs within the Salesforce ecosystem as well. So if you'd, you'd love to like learn more about the Salesforce API ecosystem, this can be a great place to start. And finally, Anytime a member of our team you know, gets in front of a developer audience, we always like to remind them about API version retirement and really, really strongly encourage them to make sure that they've updated their applications. So uh, in summer 21, the following legacy API versions were deprecated. So between SOAP version 7 and 20, REST version 20, and bulk version 16 through 20. And it is vital that if you are still running any of these sort of legacy API versions that you update your integrations as soon as possible, because in the upcoming summer of uh, 2022, these APIs uh, integrations will fail and um, you know, will, will cause a lot of issues. So you know, one tool that our team has built out for you is a free event log file called API Total Usage. So you can take advantage of that to learn what API version you're all in, on and other uh, important information about your API usage. Um, you can also check out release updates in setup for more information, as well as use our documentation to help get on the latest um, API versions. So we'd like to begin and end every presentation by saying thank you, um, you know, it, it's, you, the, our developers and our developer community is really, you know, the best part of Salesforce. Um, and we're really here just to enable you to build uh, better integrations and better applications. So thank you again for listening to the presentation um, and also for engaging with the Enterprise API team. And with awesome, that- Awesome, Chris. Uh, sorry, I was just going to say, I'll yeah, leave our yeah. information and, and we'll take uh, any questions that you guys have. Awesome, and thank you for sharing this information. This is how you can get connected to the product management team. Uh, you have their uh, emails here, you have their 
contacts uh, and you also got the twitter profiles twitter ids from them you can always reach out to them with any of your questions but we have some good questions today chris for you and abhi i would like to ask the very first question by chandan kumar uh, he says how are the errors handled in the chain of requests uh, any rollback or anything like that yeah, so I assume this is referring to the composite graph API. And yes, there are there is a rollback. So actually, that's one of the parameters you send in your API request, whether you want it to roll back or not. Um, and so this can be really useful in, in some cases, as I mentioned, when it's unacceptable for you to have some um, S objects, let's say, in created uh, at like a higher level. Um, and or sorry, at a lower level without the parent object created. Um, and so the the role uh, you, you can it, it's again, it's one of the parameters that you can choose from. And if if there's an error in anything along that that chain in the graph, it'll roll back and it'll basically ensure that none of the uh, objects in that chain are uh, actually ingested. Got it. And Anish was having the similar question. Like, no, he was also asking the same thing. Like, uh, what if the parent job fails in composite API? Yep. So that's one of the parameters that you can set. Awesome. So we have one more question uh, from uh, from Craig. It says, does the current bulk API only use the CSV data format for the data, or is JSON also currently supported? Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, um, for ingest jobs other than the composite operation that we just showcased, it only uses CSV. Um, so the, the, the composite payload is sort of our entry point into supporting JSON as well. And as I mentioned in one of my previous slides, it is on our roadmap for the upcoming releases. So you know, we are aware that this is a barrier to some customers and developers switching over to bulk API 2.0. So you, know, you can expect that in the near future, we will support JSON and XML as well to achieve that feature parity with the original bulk API. Awesome. Um, so I have a few more questions, but uh, before that, I would like to remind uh, the participants that you can always ask your questions directly. If you have any questions, you can just click the button on the top right corner to share your audio and video. Uh, myself or my colleague, uh, Aditya, who is also a moderator here, will be sharing your screen with the product managers and you can ask your questions directly. And I would say this is the best opportunity to interact with the product managers. It can be any question. You can just uh, uh, ask us to share in video. So yeah, with that, I have one more question, uh, Chris, like, no, uh, and this is the question which I got uh, many times from the community when I interact with the developers uh, in the community there. Uh, the question is around uh, bulk API version one. Uh, will you ever retire bulk API version one? Uh, we don't have plans to retire the original bulk API uh, right now. Um, we recognize that there are still some use cases that can only be satisfied by the original, and it's the, the bulk API that's most heavily used um, of the two. So um, that said, bulk API 2.0 is our go forward more modern uh, API for asynchronous large-scale workloads. And so that's the API that we'll be investing more features uh, into in the future. So if, if the original is working for you, um, that's fine. Uh, we'll continue to support it, but we want to make sure that we understand uh, what's required in order for folks to adopt the newer bulk API and take advantage of those, those benefits that Avi mentioned, like uh, more generous and simple to understand limits, more advanced capabilities, um, fewer calls in order to create and manage those workloads. So um, we want to hear back from the community to understand you know, what's of interest in order to and folks to adopt the new bulk API. Awesome. So with that, I, I have one more question. Like, when would we generally use the bulk API version one as compared to version two? Are there any use cases or any reasons why we still want to use bulk API version one? Yeah. So um, I think this was mentioned in one of the previous questions. But if you specifically need to use uh, ingest with JSON and XML, um, 
that is currently a feature that's not available for bulk API 2.0, but will be in the near future. So that could be a use case where you want to use the original bulk API uh, currently. Also, um, if you wanted uh, to specifically control your uh, PKH uh, chunking uh, size, um, that is currently not exposed to developers via bulk API 2.0. However, as I mentioned, it's in our roadmap right now to automatically optimize the PK chunking size for each query job. Um, so again, maybe two specific use cases that we're developing better features for in bulk API 2.0. First being support for JSON, XML, and ingest. The other being uh, being able to control the bulk, uh, the, the PK chunking uh, size for query. Um, and again, we're building the op, we're building uh, into bulk API 2.0 uh, optimization so that we pick the optimal chunk size instead of the developer having to handle it. Awesome. Um, so that was one of the last questions. And yeah, this was an amazing session, uh, Chris. And I mean, it, uh, it was like uh, flawless. Uh, we could understand how we can use all of these things. And the great demos were really, really great. Um, and thank you so much for joining us today and helping the developers to understand the product and the product roadmap and how they can adapt uh, bulk API version 2 and go forward with their development. Thank you for joining us. Thank you Thanks for having uh, us. Yeah, I have one, qu one question. Uh, okay, uh, that's for a different session anyways. Uh, probably if you have any questions from the previous sessions, you can always ask, we'll take this questions from the chat and we'll post it from uh, post it to the respective product managers yeah um, coming back uh, chris and uh, avi thank you so much do you want to give any last message to our, to our audience today uh, again you know we're actively recruiting members for those two closed pilots if you're interested you can reach out to your account team i've dropped my email below so uh, feel free to email me um, if you're interested in either of those pilots we've demonstrated today thank you Awesome. Thank you. And uh, participants, please uh, stay tuned. Uh, we have a session that is going to start in another five minutes. Um, again, you'll have to switch the session. Um, uh, so if you go back to the sessions tab on the left side, you can find the sessions there and you can switch to the other session. And uh, yeah, uh, that session is going to start in five minutes. At the same time, uh, it's highly encouraged you also uh, can chat in the chat window between the sessions. If you have anything to share with your uh, fellow trailblazers, um, you can always do that. Uh, maybe it may be a tip or it may be uh, anything related to the Salesforce platform which you want to share with your trailblazers. You can always do that. With that said, uh, I would let you uh, join the other session. We have five minutes time to join the other session from where we can take it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Abby. Hi, everyone.